Welcome to Electron Line. When we draw a relationship between the limit and the slope of a line, we need to take a look at this, this diagram right here. So let's say we have a function called f of x. You can see that the function curves like this. There's a ratio between the x-axis and the y-axis on that function. And then we also draw, have drawn a tangent line which touches the function at this one particular point right here. We call that point P. Also notice we've drawn three secant lines. Each of those three secant lines all go through point P and some other point on the function here to point Q1, point Q2, and point Q3. Now, the slope of each of the secant lines is defined by the change in the y distance or the change in the rise, as we would call it, divided by the change in the run when we go from one, the point P on the, on the function and the points Q1, Q2, and Q3 here. For example, if I want to know the slope of the secant line, secant 3, I draw a triangle right here, like so. And so this would be the rise. This would be the run, and the ratio of this rise over this run will give us the slope of that secant line. We can do the same for Q2 if we draw a vertical line this way. We can now see that there's a relation between the rise and the run, and the slope of, of this secant line right here is equal to the ratio of this, of this rise divided by this run. And if we do the same with the third point right there, Q1, we can see that this is the run, this is the rise, so the ratio of the rise over the run will give us the slope of the third secant line right there. Notice that the farther the points are apart from one another, the farther the points are, like between Q1 and, Q and P, is much further than from between Q2 and P, which is further than from between Q3 and, and P. Notice that the closer the points are to one another, the closer the slope of the secant line is to the slope of the tangent line. The farther the points are away from each other, for example, Q1 and P, the farther away that the, 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 the greater the difference between the slope of the tangent line and the slope of the secant line. And this is the whole concept of the, of the limit as it comes to derivatives. In the limit, as we move the points Q and P closer and closer and closer together, for example, let's say we have another point Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7, if we move those points closer and closer and closer together, then the slope of the secant line, which much more closely resemble the slope of the tangent line. And in the limit, when I bring the points infinitely close together, then the slope of the tangent line will exactly equal the slope of the secant line. And that's the concept between the relationship of the concept of the relationship between the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line, and the slope of the secant line as they relate to the derivative of the function. Essentially, the derivative of the function will be equal to the slope of the tangent line, which is equal to the slope of the secant line when we bring the two points really, really, really close together. To illustrate that, let's say that the point P is, has an x-coordinate equal to a, the point Q3 has an x-coordinate a plus 1, the point Q2 has an x-coordinate a plus 2, and the point Q1 has the x-coordinate a plus 3. So now let's find the slope of those three secant lines based upon what we have here. Also, the vertical position of P, Q3, Q2, and Q1 can be, this, can be found by plugging the x values into the function to get the function evaluated at a, at a plus 1, at a plus 2, and at a plus 3. So what is the slope 1 of secant line 1? Now that is the, the line that has the greatest difference in the slope from the tangent line. So the slope for, uh, made by secant 1 is going to be equal to the rise over the run, which is equal to the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values, and the change in the y values will be equal to the function evaluated at a plus 3, minus the function evaluated at p, which is, uh, I should say, at a. So that would be equal to the function evaluated at a plus 3 minus the function evaluated at a divided by the delta x, which would be a plus 3 minus a. So it would be a plus 3 minus a. And then see, in this case, that would be equal to f of a plus 3 minus f evaluated a divided by this minus this simply gives you 3. Then we can do the same for uh, secant 2, which gives a slope to, this is equal to, again, the rise over the run, which is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. So in this case, that would be the function evaluated at a plus 2. Notice that would be this point right here. 
minus the function evaluated at a, again that's coming down to point p, that's where the function x value is equal to a, divided by a plus 2 minus a, that simply would be divided by 2. And to find the slope here, that would be equal to the rise over the run, which is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, which is equal to f of a plus 1 minus f of a, all divided by the difference. In this case, the difference would only be 1. Notice, though, as we get closer and closer and closer, if we bring the point Q closer and closer and closer to point P, when they're really close together, the slope found in this fashion right here will be very close to the slope of the tangent line and in the limit, and that's where the concept of the limit comes in, in the limit, when I bring the two points infinitely close together, the slope of the secant line will exactly be equal to the slope of the tangent line. And that's the concept between the, that's the, the relationship, I should say, between the slope and the limit as it refers to derivatives here. And that's how we find that.